Okay, so I'm going to try to condense this and get this out fairly quickly and everything. Uh, I've, I've talked about this, and if you know me, I've probably told you about this. So I um, just wanted to give you a little bit of it. It's really actually just like a testimony. I'll give you a little bit uh, of why I believe spiritually uh, in things that are beyond. And I'm going to. This is the way that God has worked within my being and my brain and my life. You know, just showing me existentially, you know. And this, whenever I talk about it, it's just going to sound like it's all happened in like one second. But this is like years of implementing and going down paths of, of seeking knowledge of what, why this, why that, you know, and things like that. So without it being too convoluted, I'm just going to try to condense it as much as possible and make it sound as though it's just a real quick thing. But so there was a point in my life where... Um, and it, I was I was young, and um, you know I was doing substances, and uh, I had you know been in love with somebody, and just you know high school sweethearts and everything, and they basically broke my heart. And at that point in time, I had a mental fracture, and I just didn't give a sh- shit about anything, especially myself. I was just like, fuck it, pretty much, didn't care at all. Nothing. I really didn't care. I battered my brain and I didn't give a shit. Well, you know, and I, I had a couple of roommates and we all lived together and everything. And, and our pad was kind of a party pad. You know, we'd fucking hook up the Super Nintendo and play Mortal Kombat. Fucking all. I mean, we were young. You know, we didn't give a shit. We didn't have a whole lot of responsibilities. So we partied, played games and spun records, DJ, work on music, stuff like that. So, uh, there was like this one time that I had to go to work and I had to be at work at eight in the morning, but you know, we were, you know, that didn't matter. People were partying in the next room. It's all good. Uh, I don't know why, but I guess I wanted to sleep in the room with the turntables or whatever. And I went and laid down and it, this was pretty, pretty much my first experience with anything like this. And this is before the internet and I couldn't just really, you know, it was just really weird. So I was, laying down and all of a sudden I just felt like this vibration come into my brain it was like almost like an electronic pulse like being tasered in my brain or something kind of like that it's like a like an electric shock is the way that I described it and uh, uh, I kind of was like trying to fight like I was awake but I couldn't move my you know move around I could hear the people in the next room what they were talking about they were playing either Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat, and they were talking about combos and talking a bunch of shit, because that's what we did, you know, and uh, I was just like, from what I understood in my my own mind, I was awake, but my body was locked, and it was like, you know, kind of like a a jackhammer, just like, it was like electric, it was like, that's how it felt, and I was trying to stream, and and I couldn't get a stream to come out, I was trying to wake move my get my body to move and it couldn't move and I and I got to the point where I, I was like with all of my might and I and I screamed as loud as I could and and then finally I broke free and I jumped up and I went into the other room where everybody was sitting. I mean it was just like real I mean it was the door was open and it was the next room over it was the living room. And I walked in I was like what the fuck? Did y'all not hear me say scream and they're like no I was like, what the fuck you, dude? I, was, I mean, I couldn't fucking move. I was paralyzed. I was fucking screaming. You didn't fucking hear me. And they all looked at me like I was fucking nutty. Like, no, dude, we didn't hear you. You sure you just didn't have a dream? I was like, dude, were you just talking about this, this, that? I can tell you all the things that you were just talking about. Is that what you were talking about? They were like, yeah. I was like, then it wasn't a fucking dream, dude. I could not fucking move. And they were like, well, you, you didn't scream. And I kind of dismissed it as like, well, maybe I was dreaming or it's kind of like a between between the sleep and awake state. So I did a little research on REM sleep and stuff like that. I mean, I had already done some stuff like that. This is like after the times where I've, you know, done astral projection and had it had already occurred at this point in my life. But because um, I've always been conscientious about, you know, astral projection and separating the physical from the spiritual. But this this was one of the key things that really brought it to fruition because astral projection at, before that was just like I didn't know if it was more conceptual or suggestive and from a mental aspect you know I was just kind of visualizing it so hard that it seemed real but this 
brought, took it to a whole new level. So there was a few other times that it had occurred. Now, mind you, this has never happened before in my life. Uh, and, and, it, and it wasn't substances because I know my body and I know my mentality. And, you know, I, there, there were times that I have done it. it, it, it I, I know it has more now at that point in my frame of mind. And I'll, I'll continue to explain this. So it happened a few times where I was paralyzed and it was just the scariest thing that one can almost ex- experience because it's, it's just like you, you, you cannot move and you, and you want to wake up and it's, it's just horrifying. It's just an in, embedded fear. It's, it's almost like, um, you know, like if you're jumping off like the high diving board, you know how like that, the, the, where it's like the pit of your stomach is like, <gasps> or like, you know, something like a, you're, you're about to fall on your bike and you just get that like gut feeling in your diaphragm is just like all the air goes out and you're just like Ugh. it's like that but for an extended amount of time so you know this is something that I found out down the road was well I, I'm, I'm going a little too far ahead so but at a certain point I started to come out of the point where I didn't give a shit about anything and I, and I started to care about things and I started getting a little bit closer to God and I started praying, you know, frequently, you know, I, I spent a lot more time, you know, con- just conversing with God and just, uh, you know, just trying to basically heal from, from what I had been through, you know, I stopped doing substances and, uh, there was a one point whenever, like, you know, there was a, the, the thing that always re- kept me attached to it was like, you know, like I would finish what I had and then I'd be like, oh, I'm going to get some more. But this was different because I decided, you know what? I have this leftover but I'm not, and I threw it in the trash. I said, no, I'm fucking done. And then I was, I was you know, in my early 20s at this point. And, um, but, uh, and so this is, this is way after the, the first initial thing that I was talking about when I was living with other people. I mean, I still had roommates and everything, but this was at a different point. You know, I was maybe a year or two after this whole thing but there was a whole like year that I just really didn't care and I was driving my body my brain and my spirit just straight into the ground because I was just careless I didn't care so um, but I started getting closer and wanting to change and I, I just threw everything I had in the trash and I was done and not long after this I can't remember if it was like a few days or a week but it wasn't it was longer than a week the same thing happened and it was really weird so I'm laying in my bed in my room and it happens I paralyzed I can't move and I'm and I'm like fearful because it hadn't happened in, in a little while you know this so it hadn't I mean it didn't happen like frequently when it happened it happened you know every four months and then there was like a period of time that it didn't happen for like several several months and um, so it happened and I'm just like in fear I'm just like what is why is this happening you know and and I'm and I'm really honestly I thought to myself that you know I'm in a better place because I attributed it honestly to me just not being in a good mental place and just kind of fighting with myself and at that point that's what I thought so I was just like, why is this happening to me? And I was like, I'm, I'm in a better place and, and I feel better. And it's like, I could hear something uh, like sound and I happen to be a Prince fan and there was a song and I, I mean, at this point I had like a, a vast Prince collection and I had like a lot of his songs and I, I had heard every Prince song, every remake and everything, you know, it wasn't anything that I, he got, he put out that I didn't have. And I was like, I know this, it was a, a song playing I could hear it. I was like, I know this song. It's a, it's a Prince song. And, and, it, and I was like, but it sounds like it's a, a remix or it's mixed with something. It's like, it, it, it was the song, but it was different somehow. And uh, then all of a sudden, my room just kind of filled up with smoke. And I'm still paralyzed. My, I have my head tilted and I could open my eyes. So I just couldn't move anything else. But I could see that the room was starting to fill up with like a fog. And then I could hear this laughter. And... For some reason, like my wall disappeared, and it was like it was almost like I was at a fitness center, 
in like a spa room like how it has like with like the steam and the fog is just pouring out and I could see these three silhouetted figures that look like skinny lanky I mean like Slenderman but this is way pre-Slenderman and I could just start hearing this evil laughter like rawr, rawr, rawr. so they start to approach and as I start to approach and come out of the fog I can see that they're they're like yellowish orange demons that's what the first thing that I was like oh shit those are demons they're like lanky and they're just they're, their skin was like like if you ever seen the uh, or read the comic book or know Spider-Man comics the Hobgoblin very similar to that but just like real skinny like Slenderman and there was three of them and I was terrified I mean like so terrified that the only thing you know that, that I've heard and the only thing that I knew in my spirit to do was just close my eyes and start praying and just and that's what I did I was just like dear Jesus please help me dear Jesus please help me and I felt like a pain from the top of my head go straight to the bottom of my feet and it happened three times and it was like a rubber band like went through my body I mean it was just like pew. like I, 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 I couldn't I can't explain it any better than that I, I, it's, it's like like an electric shot went to the tip of my head to the bottom of my feet it was like boom boom and it happened three times I set up at my bed like free to move I, I shot up right up you know like you know like in a sitting position and awake as could be I wasn't groggy I'm not a morning person but I wasn't groggy I was alert I said straight up and probably not even a second later I said if I turn on that fucking radio and I hear a Prince song I'm gonna fucking lose it I, I got right up and I, I, I swear to you this, this is all real. This happened. I turn on the radio, and there's a Prince song, and it's called I Would Die For You. And it's a first-person perspective on Jesus Christ. If you really read the lyrics and you look at it that way, that's what it's about. But look, look it up. You'll see what it is. And I knew that at that point. And when I saw that, that was on, and that was a song that was on, I Would Die For You. I was like, oh my God, this God, God would die for me. He did die for me. And it, it just, it all, I mean, you can't get circumstance like that. A coincidence like that. It just, it, it, I was blown away. I mean, it totally threw me for a loop and it took me a long time to figure out and piece it all together. And I'm about to break it down for you. It, it has been a spiritual journey and I, and this is what happened because I've had to reflect on it and think about it and all of this what was going on was that I had actually become demonically possessed it is real entities and energy can enter your body okay let me also interject also as well because uh, there was a previous time where uh, I came out of my body and I was I went out of the Sun uh, there was like a little I forget what they call skylight in the house I went out of it I went straight out into outer space into where I saw what, what is described as the kingdom of heaven and it was floating in space and close to it was this being in a throne of pure light energy and I'm kind of a little bit offset back a little bit I mean maybe I'm going to guess maybe 100 yards away and I could instantly I had the comforting and I knew that I was like oh man that, that's God that's heaven and I saw these two, I mean, they honestly, they looked like angels and that were attacking the, the uh, uh, being that was, I mean, it was just like the silhouette of a, a person, a humanoid, but it was just made out of bright light. And they were attacking, but the, but the light was like huge. I mean, basically, he, he stood up and he backhanded both of these angel things and they... They got, they, he, they hit them so, he hit them so hard, they flew right past me. I'm like floating in space, basically. And I, and they fly right past me and I, and I follow them and they go into the sun, right? They go actually into a, I don't know if it's our sun or if it's a different star or whatever, but from what I recognize, it was a, the sun. And they went into the sun and screaming. They were like, ah, screaming. And then I came back into my body. All right, that's, that, that's also important because that, I had these, these dreams and I also had all other situations that kind of had to piece together. 
because I believe that God will talk to you and show you things, but you have to be a conduit and, and be able to perceive it and to try to understand it, or at least it'll put you onto a journey to where you're trying to comprehend what, what's going on. I mean, if I when, I when I figured it all out, I was just like, that's what it is. So I, I try to figure out, <clears throat> number one, why my body was getting paralyzed. And this was pre internet this is before the internet and all that stuff and what would happen is i would hang out with people and sometimes you get on the one-to-one conversations and just of weird stories and it would come up and they'd be like dude that happened to me i was like no way dude and i was surprised at just how many people i knew that it was happening to it's called sleep pre- 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 uh, sleep paralyzation talk to your friends see if it's a common thing because i was amazed how many people that were like oh yeah that's happened to me before i'm like no i'll get out of here dude you're not a, you're not isolated you're not alone okay so i i come to understand that it was you know quite, kind of frequent and and come to find out that like in the circumstances of people just not giving a shit or you know being in substance abuse or you know just not being in a, in a proper state of mind or you know being separate separated from God and choosing a, a path that's not a healthy path so I started to uh, do some more investigating and, and just like things would like come together and uh, and just like those nuggets would fall. I remember uh, seeing this guy, his name is uh, Ken Hovine, and I don't really remember how he ties in right now with everything because I'm doing this thing on the fly as I'm driving. As you should probably be able to tell by the background noise, but uh, I can tell you that what is in the air, okay, so, so my experiences are real. And when I was in this paralyzation, there was a reason why that song sounded like that. And the reason why is because, do you know how we listen to radio stations and stuff like that? We use an AM, FM tuner, right? And that tunes to the freak, that that, it goes to the frequency, it'll tune to a certain frequency of what, uh, you know, that, that frequency is what that song is assigned to. But here's the thing, you know, you turn the dial and that other song is gonna be on there. Now, the only thing that's changed is the frequency. It's not like it's a, a straight pipeline to where it's like it alters the song. No. All the frequencies of every song and all the frequencies that are playing like TV channels and all that shit is going on at one time. The tuner filters out all of them except for the one. So what was happening was as I was in this state, I was in an ethereal, astral, whatever you want to look at, spiritual, I was within this energy realm uh, and I was able to not have a tuner to tune specifically so not only was I hearing the Prince song that I thought was a remix or something but probably other like talking or whatever was else was on radio stations probably blended in with it and um, made it you just played multiple tracks but I was able to definitively pick out a Prince song because he's one of my favorite artists it blew my mind I was like damn dude I never thought of it that way I was like I was actually out of my body and I was able to interact audibly with these frequencies and it made perfect sense perfect sense to me okay then I started thinking about well if that happened well I mean how does one how does it how do you how do you get to the point to where you're able to be there to where you can be able to pick out all the frequencies okay what is the body mainly made out of um, you need to do a little bit of research on this too look at energy in water the effects of, of that because what I'm, I'm, I'm it is also a great electrical con- con- conductor water is our body is a big water bag and it houses the electric you know that the brain fires off neutrons are when you're sending signals to the brain it's just an electronic impulse it's basically energy electricity right 
So what happens when you are stripped off of your harness, your water bag harness, which is your body, you're able to free roam as consciousness, as energy. You don't have a body. As a matter of fact, when I was in space and I was looking at, I, I tried to see my body and I, I didn't have a body. I just didn't, I was just there. And I was able to travel at like, like light speed. Okay. So that, that also explained to me that if this is a water bag and my spirit or my electrical energy is within it, then it can probably be pulled out or other entities or energies can get inside. And that's what had happened. I had become demonically possessed. And whenever I started praying and started having a change of heart and trying to live and uphold, you know, a better life. And these demons were trying to fight me. And whenever I called the name of God, the pain that I felt the three times was the demons shooting out of me. And that's, I pieced it all together. And I'm going to be able to explain any, I mean, maybe you can't, you, I mean, you're going to explain it however you want. And if you don't believe, then I'm sorry for you. Because you're not going to, I mean, I've spent years trying to figure this shit out. And, and backing up my theories. So you're not going to be able to do it. Here's another thing. So I tried to uh, examine analytically why I had the episode with the being of light and why uh, heaven was there and, and what, why did he knock those people, or not the people, but the angels into the sun, okay? So it, it had really weighed on me. It weighed on me because I didn't like not knowing. And you can say that I made it up to satisfy a fantasy, but if you listen, it makes damn sense. So unless you can really actually dispute the way that my faith works and how I believe and the way that it's logical to me and, and basically scientifically correct. Listen, what is the hell, right? He's knocking these angels that are trying to attack him into this. What is a pit of fire? What, let, let's look at it this way as well. So if I'm an energy being, right? And I don't know, I guess these, these, angels had a physical form but that's what because they look like old school angels with like like roman helmets on actually so i mean it was pretty damn vivid and he pushed pushed them into the sun but so if, if if we go to a place called hell that's a lake of fire right and it's a pit of fire uh it's eternal and you know for as a punishment you have to think to yourself now, what would that be? Well, you look up in the sky, there's fire. That's the sun, right? You think I'm stretching, right? Lake of fire. What is the sun made out of? Is it solid? <laughs> no. But here's the other thing. You need to do a little research on this, too. Look at the sun's effect on energy. Look at gravity. What would have the power to maintain and, and, and keep a soul, in, in, as, as, as described in the Bible, in eternal torment? Look at all the things that the sun emits, radiation, the gamma, the, I mean, frequencies, uh, the heat, I mean, the energy, and the gravity. Friends, the sun, if, if I'm right in my thinking, could very well be hell. You have to really think about it. So if you die and you leave your mortal shell, right? Your body your body doesn't get sucked away from your coffin and go to hell. You talk, we're talking about spirits, right? So if your spirit, your soul, what would have the power to hold a soul? Think about it. Was it with chains? Spirit chains? Come on, man. You have to think more rationally and scientifically gravity, the radiation, all the, all the things that go along with the sun or a black hole, but, but it's very distinctively described as a lake of fire, right? Think about that. And I mean, I, I, I definitely believe that these were introduced to me to get me thinking about a lot of things in a different aspect. And, and trying to figure things out and these are the answers that I have come up with so I mean if you ever have a point in time where, where you have doubts or anything like that just start praying man 
just just make a conscious effort and you might not get it the first time you know it took me a couple of times to finally get to the point to where I was like I'm fucking done and then once you get to that point you understand you, things will start to show itself to you God will start to work and you'll see things and it, it, it's just something so powerful that if it were coincidence that's pretty damn crazy so I mean people want to I mean if you're going to try to tell me that the sleep paralyzation was the effect of something and then the demons and then I could hear the frequencies and then the print song was on I mean that there's just no the print song thing that, that was the ultimate I could almost argue almost with you and, and kind of relinquish what I was saying if that hadn't taken place. If I hadn't heard a Prince song and then set up instantly and said, I'm going to go turn on that radio and if it's on, if there's a Prince song on, I'm going to lose my fucking mind. And it was on. There's just, there's no coincidental percentage for that. There's just not. And you can try to justify or reason or whatever but if, like I, I mean if you have a solution and you know what's really weird is that uh, so I, I've looked it up not recently recently but I, I you know, when, when I had internet abilities and I would research it do, doing stuff like that and then finally uh, I, I, there was this documentary on um, sleep paralyzation and a lot of times what will happen is is that people will think that they claim that they're abducted during these points in time where they were paralyzed and they could see an alien and, and I'm going to say if, if you like didn't know what you were looking at or you didn't comprehend it to be a, a demon and I don't know you, because they, they, they were like slender men with big big yellow I mean they, but they were I mean it was be pretty hard to mistake it for a gray alien there was no way that I, it was a gray alien or what do they call it the grays it was definitely a, a yellowish to orangish I mean, it looked just like the hobgoblin's face with his with his slender body. So, you know, take from that what you will. But you know, it, it could be a possibility that these abductions are just demon possessions. I mean, and it could just be. I mean, you know, but that's just where where these circumstances have led me to this conclusion, and hopefully, it's beneficial to you because you know. If anything that I want you to maybe take from this is that we're not just flesh and that we're not alone and that there there is something out there that and, and that the Bible might have some uh, truth to it you know and if the Bible is true then that means that we have a loving spiritual father in heaven And, I mean, you know, whatever you're going through, it might be bad, but there's, there's, there's ways to get yourself mentally. I mean, I was at a place where I didn't care about life I, at all. I was on a self-destructive path and destroying things around me. And, it, and if I can go from that person to where I, I just started walking a little bit closer with God, and then the floodgate kind of opened up a little bit. I'm not going to say that I've walked a perfect you know, tenure of Christianity. You know, I've never tried to be a perfect tenure of Christianity. I try to do the best that I can on a daily basis because we are human. But you also have to understand that there are spiritual opponents. And hopefully that this knowledge that I'm giving you will, you know, help you out in your travels and whatever you might be struggling with. And that's my testimony that's, I mean... If you have any questions let me know because there's there's still other stuff i just wanted to make it kind of quick i don't know how quick it was but there you go have a good one bye